Howdy. Tuesday morning. Excited to get into the word with you. Uh, let me know that you can hear me. Let me know everything's going well. And let me know what you're looking forward to doing outside this week. What are you looking forward to doing outside this week? I'm excited for some more spring-like, even more summer-like weather, hopefully. Um, we've got a fun event coming up in Fusion, our youth group, outside tomorrow. So that is the spring chicken extravaganza. And although that's an event for our Fusion students, our high school students, our whole church, our whole um network and community here can help out if you want to you can make a donation to the event and what we're doing is we're doing fun games with eggs and there's winners etc but all the donations go to purchase chickens and those chickens make a huge difference for impoverished families around the world especially in certain areas of the world because you can get food from the eggs and you can even get a source of income from the eggs and, and the more chickens the better so 1250 purchases one chicken um that's that's our mission on wednesday in youth group so that's what i'm looking forward to doing outside hopefully uh weather permitting so let me know what you are looking forward to doing outside this week and we'll be in first peter this morning chapter two the start of chapter two so you can open up there i'll have those slides up here in a second and we'll go through go through the word together. Looking forward to everything. Yep, I'm with you there. Everything. Just feeling the sun, I'm hoping. I'm hoping for some of that. So as people join here, we'll get started and we'll start reading. So first Peter chapter two. So put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Okay. Let's pause there. Peter is telling us to grow up in our salvation, to grow up in our salvation. And this pure milk illustration that he's using we do that we have pure milk by ridding ourselves of the sinful influences and focus on as he calls it pure spiritual milk so that's important and it's important for what he's setting up here in the rest of this chapter let's go to verse four as you come to him a living stone rejected by men but in the sight of god chosen and precious you yourselves like living stones are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god through jesus christ okay so we'll talk about that priesthood in a minute because maybe you saw the title today you're all priests we're going to talk about that um but we are like living stones being built up and Jesus is the stone that the builders rejected that has become the cornerstone, right? So let's read on. For it stands in scripture, behold, I am laying in Zion, a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. All right, so for I love the stone illustration. For, for us, Jesus is that cornerstone. But for those who don't believe, those who reject him, he's a stumbling stone. He's a rock of offense. We know that Jesus is offensive to those who don't believe because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There aren't other ways. You got to go through me. And in order to go through Jesus, it means we have to acknowledge that we're sinners. And sometimes the world doesn't want to do that. So it is a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. And they also stumble because they disobey the word. 
The word is our guiding light and the word tells us what's best for us. And when people follow the world's way, they're going to stumble because there's not wisdom in the world's way. So really interesting. And, and Peter is, is setting more of this priesthood thing up here. You're a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Okay, this is what we're going to focus on today, but let's finish first. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. That's the world's way, okay, that he's talking about. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Okay, so among those who don't believe and among the Gentiles, keep your conduct honorable so that they too can believe, so they too can become these living stones, a part of this priesthood. Okay, so what is this, this priesthood that Peter's talking about here? Your chosen race, a royal priesthood. Okay, so. In the Old Testament, let me bring it up here on a screen for you. Okay. In the Old Testament that you see there on the left, this is a theologically oversimplified model. Okay, But in essence, the priests were that mediator between the people and God. So... People sin. The priest makes sacrifices on behalf of the people for God, and they, they're the that mediator, okay, that intermediary between the people and God. In the New Covenant and the New Testament, Jesus comes along. Jesus, he's a he's prophet, priest, and king. Okay, he is our great high priest. You, you see that described in scripture a number of times. What that means. Well, first of all, it means that we have direct access to God. Jesus is our representative before God because of the blood of Jesus, not the sacrifices of the Old Testament. In the New Covenant, because of the blood of Jesus, we're blameless before God. Right? So we have this direct access to God. We're, we're sons and daughters of the King of Kings, and Jesus is our great high priest. Peter then theologically takes this a step further and says, because of that, because we don't have priests anymore to mediate between the people, we have our great high priest, Jesus. You are all little priests. He says a royal priesthood. You can think of it as little priests. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone who's a Christian has to, to get up and, and preach, okay, or, or become a priest. That's not what he's saying. But we are all little priests, we are all ambassadors for the kingdom. And these, like this the cornerstone, where these living stones being built up as a part of his kingdom, and we're representing Jesus to the world. And so we're little priests in the sense that we've been given different gifts, uh, different abilities to reach people with the gospel. Okay. And we've been put in different situations to do that. So you have a different group of friends than I do, right? Your circle is different than mine, than everyone else's. And you are all little priests. And so it, it's freedom because Jesus is our high priest and we have direct access to God and we're forgiven. That's all amazing. And it's also responsibility that we don't just look to everybody else to share the gospel. Lutherans don't need an excuse to do that. Instead, we... it. It is our responsibility to, in the creative ways that, that God has, has gifted us with, to share the gospel, to share the message, and to be an ambassador for the kingdom. Right. So I, I love this passage, and we use it in our new member class, because we talk about how do we get ministry done in a church 
with thousands of people and only three pastors. Well, it's the priesthood of all believers. The priesthood of all believers. Everybody chips in. And yes, there are a couple of duties biblically that only a pastor can do, but ministry happens through our entire congregation. Okay. So that's first Peter chapter two for today. Um to take with you throughout the week, take that mindset that you are a little priest, that God has given you certain abilities to reach people. God's given you certain gifts to reach people. Maybe they're talents that you never thought about as being spiritual gifts. But be be praying for and looking for the ways that God can use you to do that this week. So with that, let's pray. Dear Lord, we, we thank you for your word that empowers us, that blesses us, and also challenges us. And we, we thank you, Jesus, for everything you accomplished to become our great high priest and the freedom that that gives us. What a blessing that is. And then as your royal priesthood of all believers, we pray that you put it on our hearts this week through your Holy Spirit to reach people in the different ways that you have gifted us. And we know that when we do that, your kingdom advances, our community is enriched, and lives are changed. And so that is our prayer this week, Jesus, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. So have a great day, everybody, and we'll be live again tomorrow morning. God's blessings.